Yeah, wow. it's, it's, it's less fun than it sounds. Hey, what's up? It's Vince Leah from VinceLeah.com, and I'm hanging out with Craig from No Egg Craig. That's me. What's up, man? Just hanging out at the expo. <laughs> <laughs> We're over at Expo West, and we've communicated online before, yep. uh, but this is the first time meeting in person, and we were talking about um, just the different conditions and why we went vegan, and you were telling me your journey of having CIDP. Mm -hmm. It's an autoimmune condition. Now, you may remember I've shared my journey about going vegan and having ulcerative colitis, which is an autoimmune condition mm -hmm. as well, and how I've used a plant-based diet to really reduce many of those symptoms. Yeah. So if you like videos like that, if you like vegan recipes, vegan shopping videos, vegan healthy hacks, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notifications bell. And I'll also link Craig's YouTube channel in the description box below. But can you give us kind of an idea, just kind of a background of how this started, when you were diagnosed, and kind of what you went through? Sure. So I guess I should probably start in the beginning with like exactly how it, how it all started. So, yeah. uh, so there I was. Uh, I was <laughs> it was I a was, cold, dark day. <laughs> uh, actually, it was November, so I was even not off. Uh, so yeah, so I was getting ready for indoor track. I was just like running, and like everything was going great. I was honestly like literally in the best shape of my life. I was like, I think I was probably like sub two minute shape for the eight hundred. Like for me, that was good. Uh, That's pretty good yeah. for most people. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I was in like the best shape of my life, and then uh, literally like three weeks before the time trial, I just got a cold, and I was like, okay, no big deal. It's a cold. I've had a cold before, and for whatever reason, I felt like I just like wasn't really recovering from it. Like I would feel fine during the day, but like literally 15 minutes into my run, every time without fail, I would just like feel so sluggish. My friends would be like so far ahead of me, we couldn't figure out what it was. Every run though, I was like, all right, this run is going to be different. This run, I'm going to like stick with my friends, and like it's going to be like every normal run I've ever had. Yeah. Uh, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I and eventually I started getting like numb, tingly sensations in mm -hmm. like my extremities, especially like I remember I lived off campus and I want to do laundry on campus. So How I'd old were you at in, this time? Was this uh, I, was, I was 19 at the 19? time. Yeah. So I would sneak into my friend's dorm and do laundry in the dorm. Uh, and I, and I, I stuck I stuck my hand in the dryer and like because it was so hot, like um, I would get like way more numb, tingly sensations in my in my hands. And I would, I came back to my friend's room. I was like, this is so weird. I like I stuck my hand in the dryer. My hand like went numb like your whole hand yeah like my whole hand like i could i could feel things but it just like you know like if you go outside i know you're from california but like if you go outside and like your, your hand gets like really cold like you can still feel but like it's not you don't feel as well as it could before yeah it's like the difference between someone talking to you and someone like whispering like you can still hear it it's not as loud yeah so it's kind of like that and then and then it would go away you know, since like my performance was going down, we were like testing for like normal running things like uh, anemia, maybe it was mono, maybe it was like um, any any form of like deficiency or like just a normal running just, like thing that you would run into. Everything was coming back like, oh, look, you're completely healthy. Nothing wrong. So it was great to hear them healthy, but frustrating to hear that they don't know what's going on. Yeah. So and I'm, I'm sure you're familiar. I'm familiar with that. With that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so I just kept getting tested with stuff. And then I was like, you know, I'm just going to take a break from running. And this was all happening starting in the 2011. Okay. I started. Uh, so, yeah, I just I just started like just getting weaker and stuff. And then uh, I, I went to see my uh, general practitioner mm -hmm. and he told me it was just stress. And I was like, okay, well, stress doesn't make your hand go now when you put it in the dryer. Uh, so, so then we, we went to um, another, another doctor um, and he was like, you know what? It seems neurological. So I'm mm -hmm. going to refer you to this neurologist. Uh, and he uh, actually diagnosed me with Guillain-Barre syndrome at the mm -hmm. time, uh, which is a bit more common than CIDP. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was like, and he told me, he was like, you know, this is the most mild form I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, that is a record I want to hold. It's the most mild form of this disease you've ever yeah. seen. And I was like, that's great. And then he was like, you know what? And usually it gets worse for four weeks or less. And then you just gradually start to get better. So since it's so mild, um, you can get better without medication. Most people who get Guillain-Barre syndrome, they'll be like completely paralyzed, um, like maybe like up to their waist or something or like. There's some people who have been like so paralyzed that like all they can do is blink and they have to be put on like a ventilator. Wow. So that's why I was saying it's the most mild form he's ever seen. And usually you you'd need to get medication um, in order to get better from that. To get you to that. Yeah, yeah, to get to basically where I was at that time. And he was like, you know, since you're not that bad and you probably won't, you can probably just you'll probably just get better. Yeah. Just just wait it out. And he was, I was like, OK, great. That sounds great. So then I um, I was having a hard time walking. And I was like, you know what, instead of like trying to go through that, like going walking on campus, like really slowly. And then also um, I had a spinal tap at the time to make sure that to, to, yeah, wow. it's, it's, it's less fun than it sounds. So I got a spinal tap and it showed that I had like elevated protein levels of like cerebral spinal fluid that are like 
like three, four, five times higher than normal. So he's like, okay, so clearly you have Guillain-Barre syndrome. It's, it's pretty obvious. Actually, one other reason that I didn't want to go back to school is because I had spinal headaches for a week after that, which I, are you familiar with what spinal headaches are? No, I mean, is that like a side effect from the spinal tap? Yeah, so it's it's relatively common because they have to stick like a really big needle in your back yeah. to, to, because it basically just drains out. They don't like suck it out like blood or something. Yeah. Um, so it's actually relatively common to get spinal headaches afterwards. Uh, where basically you're internally leaking your cerebral spinal fluid. Um, so then basically if you're laying down or your head is like below your spine, uh, then you're fine. You don't feel anything. But once you get up, it's like it was the most painful headaches I've ever experienced. Oh so I, I was I literally had to crawl to the bathroom when I had to go to the bathroom, like to keep my head down so it wouldn't hurt. And then I would like stand up and I would just like try to pee as fast as I could. Oh and God. then and then just like literally crawl back to my bed. And, and then what like a lay down. horrible experience. Yeah, so that, that was like my life for a week. Um, I was on like a lot of hydrocodone, which definitely helped like so I could like actually shower yeah. and not stink up the house. Uh, so, so that was another thing. It, it happened right when I was about to go back to school. So I literally missed the first week of school because I was laid up on the couch. And then I was like, all right. And even if I do go back to school, I'm going to be like walking like really slow. Yeah. Um, and it was just like a whole lot of complications. So like, you know what? Like once we get this all figured out, like fixed up. So like after a week, I got blood taken out of my arm and like I got it put in my back. So it was like a blood patch. Okay. So it just clotted things up and I was good after that. Um, so I didn't have the spinal headaches anymore. So I was I was thankful just to sit up. I was like, this is great. I love it. So so yeah, I was, I was able to sit up and then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take the semester off and I'm just going to, you know, try my best to get healthier. And I ended up volunteering at my high school for mm -hmm. uh, track and field coaching cool. and the season went really great so i was really happy with that are you like um, thinking like you're past everything at this point because oh, it, yeah, yeah. it was the four weeks have passed the spinal tap headache i mean all the headaches yeah. have passed so you're thinking okay now it's kind of back to normal yeah yeah so what, what i was thinking like basically during my track days like when i was i was coaching um, at the time i was like all right everything it doesn't really seem like i'm getting any better but you know maybe i am and like every day that i would like seem to be like getting a little bit worse i was like you know what it's probably just because it's too hot outside or like mm, in New yeah. York, and I know, yeah, I know, I know those mental thoughts. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then like the next day, it would be too cold, so because that's how weather is in New York. It's hot one day, it's cold the next day. Uh, so then I was like, you know what, it's too hot this day. And then the next day, I was like, oh, it's too cold. And then I was like, oh, maybe I did too much yesterday. But really, I was still just getting worse. Is what was really going on. Um, so then I just like through YouTube and Google and stuff, um, since I noticed that I was getting worse, I was just like researching and I found out, um, that what I didn't, I didn't have Guillain-Barre syndrome. I actually had chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. So I sent an email to my neurologist who said that Guillain-Barre syndrome and said, Hey, actually, I think I have CADP. Is there any time that I could like come in, you know, anytime soon? He's like, yeah, come in tomorrow. Um, and then he, yeah, I was really surprised. I think yeah. it's just because he was like, well, I thought you were going to be better for now. Like, so it's yeah. kind of like an emergency. Um, so he got me in the next day and he was like, yeah, you have CADP, not GBS. So I like to say I diagnosed myself. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, I was really pumped when I got diagnosed because I was like, all right, now, now, you've, now we you, know what it you is. You know what it is. And, and I'm yeah. sure you know, like, that's the battle. It's kind of a relief is. in a way. Yeah. So yeah, once we got the correct diagnosis, I was, I was pumped. Um, and then I was told that I would be on uh, IVIG for the rest of my life. So it'd be intravenous immunoglobulins. And I was 20 years old at this point. So like right when he said that, I was like, Nah, not for the rest of my life. I was like, you might think that. Like, I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't really ask my prognosis. I didn't really ask um, how many people get off it because I was like, well, no matter what he says, like I'm going to get off of it, and I'm not mm -hmm. going to be on the rest of my life, and I'm going to be able to walk and run again. So I was like, I, I never really asked what my prognosis would be because I was like, I already know what it is. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, then I, I started getting IVIG. It, it took a little bit for my insurance to cover it because they were just like, nah, we're not going to cover it. I was like, dude, like my quality of life is down the toilet right now. I can't walk. I went from like running like 60 miles a week to not being able to get out of a chair. Like I can't stand yeah. up. My legs, they just like felt so heavy. Like every, like I would like be in bed. If I wanted to like roll over, I'd have to like move my legs to roll over. They're like so paralyzed. You just like couldn't couldn't move them on my own, basically. Yeah. Wow. So that's scary. Yeah, it's not as fun as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, so so yeah. Um, eventually, I just I started getting IVIG, and I was also on prednisone uh, at mm -hmm. the time. And I'm sure you're familiar, familiar with, with that. Yeah. Well. <laughs> a lot of familiarities in this story. <laughs> Um, well, a lot of these autoimmune conditions, they just overlap medications. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's common. Yeah, it's because it's a lot of it's just like inflammation. Mm -hmm. And like prednisone, it's a horrible drug, but it's really effective at like yeah. decreasing it's, inflammation. It's, it's really effective in really short-term yeah. usage. The problem is when people are on it for so long. I was on it for a year and a half. That's a long and, time. And there's other people that are on it for years. I know. So I'm lucky I was only on it for a year and a half. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I was on 60 milligrams for, for most of it. Wow. Yeah. That's a large, that's a, yeah. That's a, <laughs> I, I think my, my neurologist is like, all right, well, we need to like throw the textbook at this disease. So, cause I, yeah, originally- I mean, I, I, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I was, I was happy with that. Cause I was like, yeah, do everything you can. <laughs> uh, I started getting physical therapy too. Um, but yeah, I was getting, um, 60 milligrams of prednisone and then. I was getting IVIG once a week, which I, I went to a new neurologist when I went to college, and she was like, "That's too aggressive." She's like, "Just do like every two weeks, you'll be fine." And then we did, and you know, no changes or anything. So, um, so I was, I was happy with that. But basically, yeah, I just started doing physical therapy, and after about six weeks of um, the treatment, I started to started to slowly get better because the treatment with my disease is usually very effective for most people, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just costs like seven thousand dollars per treatment. Um, is the treatment something you have to basically, like you said, continue to yeah. do yeah. in different you, intervals? Yeah, you just yeah. have to get an IV in your arm, like an IV drip for like two hours, um, like once a week, once every six weeks or so, depending on the person, yeah. different cases. So I, I just didn't want to lead that life because I was like, it doesn't sound like a very spontaneous life. Like if I wanted to go like travel, I'd be like, all right, well, I got to, you know, get back by the 16th to get my treatment. You know, or like if I um, if I wanted to go somewhere else and like live somewhere else, I'd have to like send over insurance papers. Like it'd be like a whole thing. So I was like, my life would just be easier if I don't have medication. So yeah, I just wanted to get off of it, and I tried a bunch of different things. Um, I tried just like an anti-inflammatory diet, um, which I would just have to Google things and like see if, if it's inflammatory and if it's not, and I would just have to like try to memorize. And it, uh, I was like, I want something more concrete. Yeah. Um, my aunt showed me something by a doctor named Dr. Terry Walls. Um, she, she's more, she's very into like, you know, grass fed meat and like omega threes and like just, um, not vegan. So it was, was kind of like a variation of paleo. Um, so I tried that really no, no changes. Um, it was dairy free. So that was, that was yeah. you know, a step in the right direction. Um, so I was trying Daya before I was vegan. Okay. Um, and there was this back in like, I'll say like 2012 or something like that. So the day back then was, was <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you can't have cheese, it's good. If you can have cheese, you'd be like, no, thanks. Yeah. Uh, but it, day has gotten really good by now that we just got back from the day booth. They have really good cheese. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, off of day. Uh, and yeah, so eventually I found, um, after about six months of just like trying different diets, I found Fully Raw Christina on, mm-hmm. on YouTube, which I'm sure everybody's familiar with her. Yeah. Um, so I, I was raw vegan for like nine months. Um, and I noticed like within two weeks, all my symptoms from prednisone gone. Like I could sleep better. I had no, I had pretty much no acne. All my bloating was gone because like when like a raw vegan diet, like yeah. there's like no sodium, which on prednisone, like you can't have any sodium. And it's, it's super easy when you're just eating fruits and vegetables to not have very high sodium. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was great. Um, but yeah, I noticed within two weeks, like all my symptoms for prednisone were just gone. Uh, and then I also noticed that, this, so this is just anecdotal, but I noticed that like just the rate of recovery seemed to increase. Like I just seemed to increase within two weeks. I increased maybe what I would have increased or like um, as far as like strength and neurological I was going to say changes. recovery. Are you talking about like the, your muscles and yeah. like from workouts or the condition? Yeah. So basically like I could, I could uh, start to feel every day. Oh, basically okay. I was able to feel things a little bit more okay. like just like by touching things. Uh, and then I, I, my legs didn't feel as heavy, as heavy every day. Yeah. I was just getting a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to walk every single day. But then I noticed within two weeks of going vegan that like I started to just improve faster. So I improved like maybe what I would have increased uh, in like a month. I improved in like two weeks. So wow. I was like, wow, this, this, see, this is great. This is like the diet that's actually working. Yeah. Um, and then like I was in college. So like after like nine months, it was, um, it was getting to be winter and I was like, all right, well, I don't want to like pay like $300 a week to just eat oranges and bananas. So then I started like incorporating cooked food, literally mm-hmm. didn't notice any difference in my diet or in my, in my, um, health, I didn't notice any yeah. decline or anything like that. Yeah. I've been vegan ever since. And I, I feel like I'm still recovering to this day. Cause like yeah. just two years ago I was, I started working out. Um, and I, I worked out pretty seriously for like two years and, I started off very weak, you know, because I was coming out of a wheelchair and yeah. like, you know, so I, I couldn't squat or bench or much, uh, very much so because it also affects my upper body. Like basically all your extremities. All right? my, yeah, yeah. The more distal, the more I was affected. So, you know, my legs are a little longer than my arms. Yeah. So there, so they were more affected than, than my arms were, but they were still, I was still like pretty weak. Now I would say that I'm, I'm at a hundred percent as far as like my upper body goes. My lower body, 
probably like 95%, 99% recovered. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, but what I, the reason I brought that up is just because like a couple years ago I was lifting pretty seriously for like two years and I got a pretty good amount stronger. And then just recently, like two, two months ago, I started lifting again. Literally the first workout, I hit all my PRs that I had from working out for two years. Um, and it's just, it's crazy. Just, and it's just because I didn't have as much nerve damage because I thought that I was as recovered as I was going to get. And then I found out like two years later, I'm still recovering. So I was like, that's honestly, that's really good news. It's like, I'm still recovering. I'm still potentially going to get even better, better than I was. Yeah. Now, are you still taking any medication? No medication. No it's medication. been about three years since I've had any. Med- well, I've been on like um, antibiotics from getting my wisdom teeth out. But like, yeah. uh, like <laughs> stuff unrelated. <laughs> now, when I work with my doctor, um, we've been able to reduce some medications, but not all of them. Mm-hmm. And I always recommend that you do talk to your doctor oh, and yeah. work with him. Yeah. Um, and they've been pretty receptive when yeah. I tell them that I'm vegan, plant based, and mm-hmm. they're really supportive as long as your condition is improving. Yeah, absolutely. Um, were you able to work with your doctor as you went through that process? Uh, so I think my doctor knew that I was vegan because she would come in and like I would be at my you know infusion center like just in a chair and she could like walk by and say hi yeah. um and she would see me eating like a bunch of bananas and she would <laughs> she asked me about it and then I, I told her about it she's like oh okay. And she didn't really say, like, no, you shouldn't do that. You're not going to get enough protein, <laughs> like, stuff like that. She was like, all right, you know, whatever you want to do. And then she was also the one who, like, uh, when I left, like, for the last time, she was like, all right, Craig, well, you've gone six weeks without your treatment. And if you can go over six weeks without your treatment, then you just you just don't need it anymore. So that's when she was like, okay, well, I, I don't understand what you're doing, but whatever you're doing, just keep doing it because you don't need your medication anymore. I never expected you to make the recovery that you have as quickly as you have, and I never expected you to get off of your medication. So just keep doing it. That was her advice. <laughs> so that was really, it was really nice to have like supportive doctor on my side. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. great. Because sometimes you hear stories where people, like the doctors are telling them, don't do that, yeah, don't do this. Sure. And even if it's working. Yeah. You know, so it's great that you had support with that. Yep. I've had support with my doctors as well. Mm-hmm. So thanks for joining me today, sharing your yeah, story. Of uh, I hope you've liked it. Let me know in the comments um, if you're familiar with this condition, if you struggle with it, if you know somebody that does, and what your experiences have been with doctors and dealing with them if you go vegan and plant-based, what they say, because I'd be interested to know you know, what other people have experienced with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always interested to hear other people's uh, autoimmune journeys like with with uh, going vegan because I, I feel like there's more like cancer survivors there's more people yes. who just had like just random health ailments and I feel like I've because I, I've tried to find other people who have like autoimmune disease stories who have like gone vegan and I feel like there's kind of like a shortage of those types of videos yeah you see a lot of heart disease you yeah see a lot of oh cancer. yeah absolutely but autoimmune is coming back up but that's why I've done videos on um, my journey with colitis because yeah. they're just not a lot of people are talking about these conditions. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are, are dealing with them, are suffering yeah. with them. Mm-hmm. So the more we share our stories with, with you, you know, the more it gets out there and the more awareness can be brought to them. Yeah. So thanks for joining me today, man. Yeah. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah. Cool. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. Link for that is in the description box below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as I post new videos every week. And remember to keep living fit from food. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.